Until last lecture, we completed the planar solidification of single phase alloys. But the single phase alloys, uh, when you are trying to get planar solidification, that is mainly for single crystal growth. But that, that need not always be the case and planar solidification may also need not be the case. You may get non-planar or what is called as cellular solidification. So today we will look at cellular solidification of single phase alloy. So, this is our topic for uh, this and probably the next lecture. Now, first try let us try to understand why should we get planar or in some cases non planar solidification. So, let us try to understand planar versus non planar solidification. Let us say this is the interface between solid and liquid, this side is solid, this side is liquid and let us say this is the temperature profile and if you are talking about temperature profile why not use a different color. So, let me, so this is the temperature profile in the solid and this is let us say the temperature profile in the liquid and this is uh, if this is the interface this is somewhere very close to T m the melting point. Now, let us say that a protrusion occurs onto the solid. So, this is some solid because of some random fluctuation a small protrusion grows. So, this part is also solid along with this all, but rest of it is liquid and the liquid temperature is like this. So, what happens to this solid that is that grows like this? You would see that the temperature that it is exposed to is greater than T m. So, although some random fluctuations may cause the growth of such kind of uh, protrusions and cells, but these cells will not be stable. They will get melted away, they will vanish away. So, what do we know understand that random fluctuations can cause protrusion. But if the thermal gradient if T is greater than T m protrusion melts away meaning it is unstable. Can you think of a condition where this protrusion would be stable? Let us draw this a little bit differently now this time let us say the temperature profile is like this. So, like this means it is increasing. So, this is the T m and uh, this part is solid, this part is liquid, but because of certain condition somewhere inside localized region the temperature inside the liquid is the, the thermal gradient inside the liquid is like this. So, the temperature inside the liquid is also dropping. So, it is a super cool liquid it has not solidifies, but it is still uh, below the melting point. Now, let us say because of some random fluctuations again a protrusion has grown. Now, this time the temperature is less than T m. So, there is no reason that this protrusion will melt away and therefore, this protrusion is stable. So, if T is less than T m protrusion stays in fact, it will grow. implies it is stable. Now, this is what is called as thermal undercooling. So, there is a temperature uh, lower than the melting point, the thermal gradient is uh, basically negative and because of which the protrusions are stable. 
but there is something similar that happens in alloys and it is called constitutional supercooling. So, let me take a couple of uh, color chalks to draw this. Now, let us say we have let me draw three plots this time one is the phase diagram. So, this is for the temperature and this is these are our liqu uh, liquidus and solidus and let us say this is our C naught. So, this is the liquidus temperature T L and somewhere let us say we are at some temperature T 1 and at this temperature this is the uh, this is the temperature of the liquidus at this particular uh, condition and here we have the liquid this is a solid plus liquid region this is a solid region and on a different plot what we will draw is temperature versus composition. So, this time this is temperature, this is composition and we will also draw a third plot which is uh, so sorry this was composition, this is distance. So, we are talking about real crystal and this is uh, a composition and this is distance. Okay, so, now let us say the liquid that is present is at the at the interface is at this particular concentration, but if we are solidifying then in the overall pool the liquid concentration should have this concentration which is C naught. So, this is a concentration uh, let us say we call this C L and this is our C naught and let us say this is this particular point we are looking at the distance. So, this is the interface and in this side we have liquid this time this side we have solid. So, at this particular point uh, just at the interface what will be the concentration of liquid it will be equal to C L because of the interface equilibrium the concentration we are at this particular temperature T 1. So, the concentration of the liquid just at the interface must be this which is C L. So, this is our concentration C L and this is the concentration C naught if you are assuming a diffusion controlled solidification therefore, the concentration of the liquid must follow like this. So, at very large distance it is equal to C naught just at the interface it is equal to C L and uh, this is the distance into the melt. So, this you can also call it uh, distance from solidification front. Now, if the composition is like this at each at for each and every composition that you see over here there is a liquidus for a composition like C naught the liquidus is higher for a concentration like C L liquidus temperature is lower. So, if you were to project it onto this this is how it will look like. So, for this particular composition this is your temperature liquidus temperature for this particular composition this is the liquidus temperature. So, somewhere over here this is your T L this is your T 1 and therefore, corresponding to each and every composition there will be a liquidus temperature and the temperature versus the liquidus temperature versus the composition plot would look like this. Now, remember this is not the actual 
टेम्परेचर ऑफ द मेल्ट दिस इज जस्ट द टेम्परेचर लिक्विडस टेम्परेचर फॉर द करस्पॉन्डिंग कंपोजिशन सो यू कैन इवन कॉल इट फ्रीजिंग टेम्परेचर और यू कैन से कॉरेस्पॉन्डिंग लिक्विडस टेम्परेचर but this is something like a theoretical value just like you talk about copper and the melting point is 1080 degree celsius so we are just talking about the theoretical melting point for corresponding compositions so for at and for the corresponding distance for each particular distance there is a particular composition as you can see and for each particular composition there is a corresponding liquidus temperature we are not talking about what is the actual temperature next we get to what is the actual temperature so let's say this is the actual thermal gradient something like this what we were talking over here so still we have a positive thermal gradient over there something like this and we have a positive thermal gradient over here but now this positive thermal gradient has different uh, overall effect in the liquid in this particular case just because the the composition is changing so because the composition is changing along with the distance the liquidus temperature is changing therefore the liquidus temperature at this particular point happens to be higher than the actual temperature that is present in the liquid even though the thermal gradient is positive the liquidus temperature is higher which means that the temperature the actual temperature is lower than the freezing temperature of the material all all the way up to this point meaning up to this point you have what is called as constitutional super cooling so again uh look at the plot carefully these this is the composition variation with distance so this is how the composition will vary we are assuming a diffusion controlled liquid mixing so this is what how we know at the at the solid liquid interface the composition is governed by the phase rule and if we say that this is the temperature this should be the composition at the interface and very far from the interface the concentration of the liquid must be c not so this is what we have shown and uh, this is the typical diffusion profile for the liquid uh, concentration now this is this is the composition that is varying with distance for each composition there is a liquidus temperature which has been plotted or the freezing temperature so now the freezing temperature looks like this and when you draw the actual thermal gradient so this is the actual thermal gradient inside the liquid and this is the theoretical freezing temperature and when you compare the two you see that up to a certain point it may happen it need not it need not always be the case but it may happen that even with a positive thermal gradient a part of your liquid is below the freezing point or below the liquidus temperature so thermodynamically it should be in the solid state and this part which is although the thermal gradient is positive which is but it is still less than uh, less than at its freezing temperature is called constitutional supercooling now we have looked at constitutional supercooling so at this point it is a good idea to compare or to be able to differentiate between constitutional supercooling and thermal undercooling both are different things and in the uh, in the liquid you can have both constitutional supercooling as well as a thermal undercooling so let's look at constitutional versus thermal
let us say this the, what I have drawn here is the thermal gradient and this happens to be the T m or T eutectic depending on whether you are talking about a pure material or uh, alloy eutectic composition. So, this is the melting point, but the actual temperature for whatever reason may be in a localized pocket or something that actual temperature is the temperature profile is like this. In the solid of course, it is going down or uh, basically increasing up to the interface. So, the solid is stable, but in this part as you can see now this part is again because of the temperature presence the temperature being lower than the T m it is lower than the freezing point and this is called thermal under cooling or super cooling you can use the term interchangeably under cooling and super cooling while as we described for our case of constitutional super cooling even if you have a positive thermal gradient, but because the liquidus is changing continuously. So, this is distance from interface So, this is the liquidus variation in the liquidus temperature of freezing temperature and why is the freezing temperature changing usually you would expect for same material the freezing temperature to be constant, but here the material is same, but the composition is changing which we saw over earlier and because of that you got this kind of a curve that uh, the freezing temperature is changing and your actual thermal gradient like we drew over there it may be like this and therefore, this part is as I said constitutional super cooling. Now, if we this is constitutional super cooling at this point now we are in a position to ask what is the criterion to avoid or under what the circumstances you would start to see constitutional super cooling. So, for that what you would need is the, the critical thermal gradient you see this is the uh, T L or the T liquidus variation as a function of distance what you want is what is this critical value. So, we have drawn a tangent just at x equal to 0 to of this plot. If your thermal gradient was like this then you would not see any constitutional super cooling as soon as it goes below this goes below the slope that you have at x equal to 0 small fraction a small region of the liquid will start to fall inside this or below the freezing temperature the below the uh, theoretical liquidus or freezing temperature and then you will start to see constitutional supercooling. So, if you want to avoid it you want to have greater than or equal to this slope. If you want to have super cooling then G which is the thermal gradient should be less than this critical G critical. So, yeah, it uh, from this uh, formulation it is clear that you need to find what is this G critical value either way to dis understand or to predict uh, when the cellular solidification will take place or to avoid when you do not want cellular solidification when you want only uh, when you want only the planar solidification. So, let us look at the criterion or uh, criterion to describe this critical gradient not the criterion, but the formulation to describe this. So, overall we can say we are looking at crit So, now we are looking at 
criterion for constitutional supercooling. Let us start from the li uh, liquid plot, liquid profile, how the liquid uh, uh, concentration varies and if we are taking just the liquid diffusion as the way of mixing in the liquid, then we can we know from the previous that the concentration of the solid looks uh, sorry the concentration of the liquid is given by this equation. If we know the concentration of the liquid, we can find d C L by d x. We'll, you will see in a moment why we are interested in DCL by DX. So, let me at this point say why we are looking at DCL by DX. We said that we are interested in DT by DX at X equal to 0, but this DT by DX can also be written as DT by DC at X equal to 0 times DC by DX at x equal to 0. Now, this d t by d c is nothing but m l which is which comes from your phase diagram. So, we are looking at d t by d c this is t this is c when we say d t by d c we are only saying what is the slope and you remember we have already taken it as a straight line. So, this is a constant value if we had not taken it as a straight line then this d t by d c value would also be a function of x, but fortunately for us we have taken the assumption that this is a straight line. So, no matter what composition you take this d t by d c value would remain constant which is equal to m l. Next we want d c by d x at x equal to 0. So, this is the d c by d x c is our concentration of liquid. So, here we have the subscript c l. So, let uh, let me put L over here be, uh, to be consistent. Now, what we want is if you put x equal to 0, what you are left with is minus V over d L 1 minus k by k times c naught. So, this is your d C L by d x at x equal to 0. Now, you multiply it by this and you get d t by d x. Now, this is your d t by d x at x equal to 0. This is a critical thermal gradient. Now, this thermal critical thermal gradient uh, we have already said if you want to have super cooling then your actual thermal gradient should be lower than this critical thermal gradient. So, let us uh, write it here this is critical. So, this is the critical thermal gradient. If you want super cooling your actual thermal gradient should be lower than this critical thermal gradient. If you want to avoid super cooling then your actual thermal gradient should be greater than or even equal to this critical thermal gradient. Even if it is equal to it will have no liquid which is below 
the freezing point and then you will not get any constitutional supercooling. So, we will leave it at this point and uh, we will come back to our cellular solidification and look at it in more details in the next lecture. Thanks.